Ladies and gentlemen, I have no idea the type of malarkey and anarchy that's going on in Memphis, Tennessee. How y'all are able to deal with this and sleep at night is beyond me. We have another story out of Memphis. If y'all weren't already dealing with enough, there's another story coming out of Memphis. This story is so similar to so many stories that we've been talking about for a while, which is hashtag mom's boyfriend hashtag when you date thugs you date death another clear example i don't know when people are going to start to listen to me when these mothers are going to start to listen to me when these parents are going to start doing background checks and start making more responsible dating choices that's all i ask make your bed and lay in it but when it comes to kids, you cannot put kids through this, and especially subjecting them to dangerous situations when it comes to your dating choices. I love y'all ladies so much. I just want to see y'all put yourselves in more productive situations. That's it. Not trying to take away your happiness, but I'm trying to ensure that we do better by our children because I believe that babies' lives matter. This story is going to have some details that are not going to sit well with your sensibilities, especially my opinion. So that is your disclaimer if you need to exit the video. Memphis, Tennessee, and a family delivered an emotional plea for justice Monday evening after a 26-year-old woman and her unborn son were killed in a Memphis shooting. And I'm getting this from Fox13Memphis.com. Thank you for the article. Around 6 a.m. on December 4th, less than a month ago, or excuse me, about two months ago, actually. A woman was found shot to death near a home on Ford Road, according to Memphis Police Department. Members identified the woman as 26-year-old Ashanti Smith. Smith died while five months pregnant with a baby boy, according to her family. Boy, that is a loaded sentence. 26 years old, five months pregnant, pregnant by a boyfriend, shot and killed by a boyfriend who at this point we believe it was the father of this kid. There is so much more to talk about with this. That boy would have been the first grandson for Ashanti's father, uh, uh, Anthony Smith, which we'll show his interview here in a moment, who had previously taken care of Ashanti and her two children in Memphis before moving to Ohio. Let me just say this to the family. Look, y'all, I'm sorry. I know y'all going to probably want to take my head off for of saying this. But why, why would a parent, whether it's a mother or a father, need to be taken care of by their parent? Let me explain why I say that. Because in my humble opinion, just an opinion, y'all can bring kids into this world however you want to, but I can judge this situation however I want to also. The opinion that I'm giving is that I say that before we bring children into this world, we need to be stable first. I didn't say that you have to be married, but what I am saying is that you should be stable first. I think that's a fair statement. I think doing it any other way is just flat out irresponsible. If you can't take care of yourself, pay your bills, have something left over, Saved up for a rainy day or whatever. I don't believe that you should be producing children. We are using this system of Section 8 food stamps, subsidized housing or whatever the child support, whatever the hell you want to call it. We are using this system as a crutch and not a tool. Hmm. Would you like me to explain the difference? We are relying on this system generation after generation after generation after generation to help us raise our children and that is not what this system is for this system is to be a temporary thing if you absolutely have zero other options 
exhausted all the, all other options get yourself on your feet get off the system that's not what we're doing as a whole and i'm not talking about black folks white folks i'm talking about americans in general not all too many of us are relying on this safety net system and if you have too many people using a safety net system what's going to happen please stop me and tell me when i'm saying something that's factu factually inaccurate the system is going to buckle. It's not meant to survive like this. We can't bring children into this world like this. The reason I keep saying this is because it breaks my heart to see these mothers and these children and these fathers continue to go through this. If you ask me, I think our children, our children, our children should be placed number one as our number one priority. And I just don't think we're doing that. Am I a perpetrator of that? You damn right I am. I've brought children into this world that way. And I think that if you have done things wrong, you, meaning myself, should be the person to speak against the things that we're doing that are harming our children and harming our productiveness in society. I think that makes sense. So if I've done things wrong, if I've been a criminal, yes, I should be the one speaking out against criminals. If I've been out being a gangbanger, you damn right I should be on the front lines for saying how effed up gangbanging he is. If I've been a thug, you damn right I should be the, front, the first person on the front line out there protesting against these fools. That's how we get a progressive society. That's the only way it works, is we have to hold each other accountable. So I mean no disrespect to this woman's family and friends in the city of Memphis, but this is a bigger problem than this dude and this mother. But let me tell you their story. Two of those children, two and three years old, are left to grow up without a mother. What this monster did to her, and I want people to understand also that he took my grand, my only grandson. She was pregnant with my grandson, and he took both of them, according to the grandfather, her father. Her family said Ashanti's daughters were in the home in Kentucky Street alone for almost 24 hours until somebody came to get them. 24 hours. This is another story where a lot of time passed. Dead mother and kids around their dead mother. All I'm saying is I use this as an example to say that as family and friends, guys, y'all got loved ones. You got family and friends. Call them. Check on them. Send them a text. Check on them daily. Shout out to my best friend, Kurt Dog. Shout out to my mother and father. Out of those three people, I hear from at least one of them every single day. I check on my daughter all the time. It is so crucial that you guys think about your family and friends. Make sure and check on them. Something as simple as checking on them and you might realize something is not right. They usually will respond. I called them. They didn't pick up. Check on them. Check on them. Smith said that he believed it was the father of her children who pulled the trigger. She said it comes from years of trying to tell Ashanti to get out of the abusive relationship. That you should not have to tell grown adults. So if you so here's the thing about going to the thug zoo. You everybody knows what the thug lion is going to do. The thug lion is violent by nature. Why put yourself in a situation to deal with a thug lion, going to the thug zoo, and let alone that producing kids and then bringing your kids, keeping your kids around this unstable ass thug lion? But then we are so surprised that the lion does what the lion does instinctively and attack because it doesn't value itself properly doesn't find value in itself, therefore it's not going to find the same value in everybody else. And this thing continues to keep happening. We don't do background checks. Maybe you know that these people are, are, are not reputable citizens of the United States and you just don't care. You just think this is attractive. You just think that this dude is sexy. You think that you do that if you don't have kids, but you don't produce kids with that. 
I could use a messed up analogy and I'm not going to do it. I am not, not tonight. Because that's going to piss some people off. So let me not compare it, but let me just say that if you like doing things, you like doing drugs, you like dating thugs, you like living an irresponsible life, just don't have kids and don't involve anybody else in your bullshit. Simple. We could not get her to leave him. Begging this woman, it's according to them, couldn't get her to call the people in blue to come here, according to Michelle Smith. Somebody that would kill the mother of his child does not need to be on this earth and definitely does not need to be free because he took my daughter, my grandchild, away from me, according to Anthony Smith. Smith said he's going to make sure they know who the mother was as they get older. She was a loving person. She's going to be missed. The rest of our lives, she's going to be missed, according to Michelle Smith. Memphis police have not announced a sus. Well, at the, well, they already have. They've announced the suspect, which is... Get his face back up here. Uh, we go right here. Nakia Jackson. That is the man who we believe did it. And I really hope that I'm speaking some sense. And these stories sometimes give me an opportunity to kind of give you guys a little bit more insight as to why I feel the way that I feel, what drives me, and what I'm trying to accomplish. So I gave you guys probably a, a ton. When you're talking about solutions, I gave a ton of solutions just in that little soliloquy that I gave. And I hope it makes sense to somebody. It's not going to make sense to everybody. But I hope it helps somebody. Let me give you guys the fair usage. Let's get it. Federal law allows citizens to reproduce, distribute, or exhibit portions of copyrighted motion pictures, videotapes, or video discs under certain circumstances without the authorization of the copyright holder. This is called fair use. It is allowed for purposes of criticism, news reporting, teaching, and parody, which doesn't infringe of copyright under 17 U.S.C. 107. And again, if you guys are listening, you can help benefit this story a lot by just simply clicking the thumbs up. And all it does is it helps bring more people here so they can see the story, share the story. And what we're doing is we can't save Ashanti or her kid, unborn baby. But what we can do is it might save another mother's life. If you share this story, it might convince another woman who might be in a violent situation. Please look at it then bigger than just this story. We're trying to save lives and we might be able to save lives if we can split if we can spread the correct message. Let's get it. An arrest is made today in a shooting that killed a 26 year old mother and her unborn baby. Memphis police arrested Nakia Jackson for that shooting. It happened last month. We told you when that shooting happened that Ashante Smith was five months pregnant with her third child when she was found shot to death on Ford Road. Now, her family tells Fox 13 Ashanti's daughters were in the home on Kentucky Street alone for hours, almost 24 hours, in fact, until someone came to get them after that shooting happened. What this monster did to her, and I want people to understand also that he took my only grandson, because she was pregnant with my grandson, and he took both of them. That's an emotional plea from the father of 26-year-old Ashante Smith, the pregnant mother who was shot and killed Friday night. It's just too much. Tonight we are learning more about the victim and the family she leaves behind. Fox 13's Kayla Solomon spoke to her parents. This was earlier today. Kayla Smith was a mom to two young girls. Merle, that's right. And I confirmed with Ashante Smith's family that she was also more than five months pregnant with her third child. Now, I met with a family earlier in South Memphis and they were absolutely distraught. Distraught, but looking for justice. She was like my baby. And for her to be taken from us, it's not right. It's not fair. It's been three days since the death of 26-year-old Ashanti Smith. Her family says she was found dead on Ford Road on Friday night. She was a young mother to two girls with a baby on the way. He took my only grandson because she was pregnant with my grandson. 
and he took both of them. Her family says Ashanti's daughters, who are two and three years old, were in their home on Kentucky Street alone for almost 24 hours until someone came to get them. It's a thought that still haunts grandmother, Michelle Smith. It hurts because I know they wondered for those hours they were alone. Where's mommy? Where's granny? Granny, where are you? Yeah. Granny! Smith says she's going to make sure they know who their mother was as they get older. But for now, they'll be waiting patiently for an arrest. She was a loving person. Granny, where are you? Yeah. Granny! Smith says she's... I know they wondered for those hours they were alone. Where's mommy? Where's granny? Granny, where are you? Yeah. Granny! It's grandmother, Michelle Smith. It hurts because I know they wondered for those hours they were alone. Where's mommy? Where's granny? Granny, where are you? Yeah. Granny! I said I wasn't going to do this. That's just too much, man. I get that you're hurt. But this is, if in my humble opinion, this is more of a show than it is hurt. Like, why turn this into a circus? Do y'all agree? Do you disagree? I'm not going to crack any jokes. I, I promise you I'm not. I promise. Look, I'm, I'm going to be good. I promise. I'm not going to do it. But I think that you should have some semblance of sincerity when you do an interview. I think that, you know, it's okay to express your pain, your anger, perhaps. Maybe this is anger. I think this is a bit much. I think this is a bit much. Uh, just a bit much, ma'am. It's grandmother, Michelle Smith. It hurts because I know they wondered for those hours they were alone. Where's mommy? Where's granny? Granny, where are you? Yeah. Granny! Smith says she's alone. Where's mommy? Where's granny? Granny, where are you? Yeah. Granny! I just think that we have to be careful about making these moments about us. And please remember, there were other children around. Please remember that. That's the reason why I'm stopping this right here, pointing this out right here. And I need y'all to remember that there were other children involved. The mother and the unborn son lost their life. That is tragic in itself. That is tragedy to the fullest extent of tragedy. But there are other alive children that still need them and us. I just don't think that we should take moments like this and turn it into a spectacle. I'll leave it at that. Smith says she's going to make sure they know who their mother was as they get older. But for now, they'll be waiting patiently for an arrest. She was a loving person. She's going to be a missed person. Yes, most definitely. The rest of our lives, she's going to be missed. Now, Memphis police say they do not have a suspect listed at this time. But coming up at 10, I'll tell you who the family says they believe pulled the trigger. And believe me, ladies and gentlemen, I said that the nicest way possible. Just wanted to let you know. It's the nicest way I could say that. Like my baby. And for her to be taken from us. It's not right. It's not fair. A pregnant woman shot and killed 
Tonight, the family of Ashante Smith says they have an idea of who they think the gunman is. Fox 13's Kayla Solomon talked to the family earlier today. Kayla, what is it that Memphis police are telling you? Merle, to be clear, Memphis police have not named a suspect in this case, but the family of Ashanti Smith says they have an idea of who pulled the trigger. Ashanti, she's a beautiful young lady. Mistaken. She didn't always make the right decisions, but yet, she's a good girl. The shooter. Now, why couldn't we get a response like that? What she said made perfect sense. She said she wasn't perfect, but this is a tragedy. I like what she said. I'm going to play that again. I think what she said was perfect. She didn't always make the right decisions, but yet she's a good girl. She didn't always make the right decisions, but she was a good girl. And that, and that wraps it up in a nutshell to say that the decisions that you make can come back to haunt you. But it doesn't mean that she deserved this. She definitely didn't deserve this. But we also have to be more careful about the choices that we make because those choices can come back to hurt us. And she said that in such a nice, eloquent way. And these are all elder women. And notice how all three of them said it completely different. In their own way. I know they all care and I know they all loved her. But I definitely think that what she said was by far the by far the most poignant thing. Love what she said. Shooting death of Ashanti Smith has her family wondering what they could have done to prevent it from happening. Sweet, loving. She tried to help understand other people's problems. I think she should have she should have kept her demeanor like that. That was a hell of a lot better. And wasn't too much to tell you of her own. She carried this bearing the whole time that her and this guy was together. Ashanti's mother, Michelle Smith, says they believe it was the father of her children who pulled the trigger. She says this comes from years of trying to tell Ashanti to get out of the relationship. We couldn't get her to leave him. Couldn't get her to call the people in blue to come here. Super important. Every action has a reaction. Every choice that we make, we have to live with that. Listen to what she said. And I agree. I totally agree. Prevent it from happening. Sweet, loving. She tried to help understand other people's problems. And wasn't too much to tell you of her own. She carried this bearing the whole time that her and this guy was together. Ashanti's mother, Michelle Smith, says they believe it was the father of her children who pulled the trigger. She says this comes from years of trying to tell Ashanti to get out of the relationship. Years. Years. She's grown. They told her for years, this is dangerous. This is dangerous. This is dangerous. You have to leave. Years and years and years. What more can you do with a grown person? That's all you can really do. We couldn't get her to leave him. Couldn't get, get her to call the people in blue to come here. It's just sad, man. I hope, like I say, I hope that more ladies out there are able to share this with more of these young ladies so that we can prevent these type of things going forward. That's what I'm hoping. The 26 year old was more than five months pregnant with her third child. Somebody that would kill the mother of his child don't need to be on this earth. That's right. And he definitely do not need to be free because he took my daughter, my grandchild away from me. For several weeks, many in this Westwood neighborhood have been trying to process what unfolded back on December 3rd. It was sad because like nothing like that never happened over here. Weeks later, Evidence of the crime is still visible. Investigators say Ashanti Smith, at the time 18 to 20 weeks pregnant, crashed into this fence after being shot by her boyfriend. It's left neighbors shaken. I thought maybe two people were shooting at each other. So I just laid on the couch until I seen the blue lights and I was like, oh my God, somebody got shot. And then when I heard 
that it was a young girl and she was pregnant. They just did something to me. Tuesday, Memphis police arrested Nakia Jackson and charged him with two counts of first degree murder. Court documents revealed that the mother of his children turned him in after he showed up to her home with what looked like blood on his clothes and then confessed to her about what he had done. And then confessed to her about what he had done. Blood on his clothes. Documents revealed that the mother of his children turned him in after he showed up to her home with what looked like blood on his clothes and then confessed to her about what he had done. Murder. Court documents revealed that the mother of his children turned him in after he showed up to her home with what looked like blood on his clothes and then confessed to her about what he had done. I got to say this again. Dating is a choice. It is not an addiction. It's a choice. It is a conscious decision. You choose to get involved with people like this. You choose to stay. You choose to ignore good advice from family and friends. You choose to deal with the consequences that come with that. I want to remind y'all again and say this, and hopefully this is very, very clear. You have two different women, a man like this, this violent, this unstable, doing nothing productive, had no problem sleeping with as many women as he wanted, making as many kids as he wanted. No issue, no problem, no marriage, no commitment, no stability. Think about that. What are we settling for? And I say we, think about that. What are we settling for? Are we desperate? Are we lonely? Do we not know any better? No, I think we do. Especially if we want to claim to be the most educated people in the United States of America. No, I think we are highly educated enough to understand. We don't need a microscope to see this. Conscious choice. These type of fools have no problem getting sex all day every day think about that if you believe that your future and your life is worth something why don't you show it in your actions by who you choose to date how you produce children who you marry and who you decide to just let shack up with you and do whatever the hell they want to do marriage doesn't guarantee anything but here's what i can tell you what marriage does is it's just a social construct on paper, a legally, a legally binding agreement between a man and a woman that says that we agree to do this thing under law and under, under the eyes of God and whatever else that we're going to be and act as one unit. We are not even demanding that a person marries us and makes a real commitment saying, oh, I'm, I am going to be there for you, good. I is not going to leave you, good. I is love you, good. That's, that's BS. I almost cussed. I didn't cuss. That's BS. Why are we just accepting somebody's word for it? They don't have to prove it. They don't have to prove it in their actions. They don't have to prove it at all. We're just like, okay, I is going to go with what you said to me. I believed him, y'all. I believed him. I just didn't know how to get out of this thing, y'all. excuses cut the excuses this is the end result period this is what happens when we continue to procreate and get into these relationships for all the wrong reasons a simple criteria and let me give a shout out to my ladies that understand the ones that understand how powerful and beautiful you really are Ladies, can y'all speak up in the chat, please, and represent yourselves who understand that you are worth something. 
you are valuable and you are not going to just accept anything and everything just because a man gives you something. Just because a man gives you a plate with a pile of crap on it don't mean you have to accept it. It's a choice. Demand better. If you accept McDonald's, guess what you're going to get? You're going to get McDonald's rather than Benihana's. Holla if you hear me. If you accept less, you're going to get less. All day or a day. Guess what happens when you demand better? You're going to receive better. And people and men are going to strive to give you better. And if everybody strives to give all women better, then we raise up as a community, as a society. Think about that for a moment. Instead of having a bar low enough that a bow-legged caterpillar can walk underneath it, raise the damn bar, raise your standards. Why? Because I think that you guys are smart, powerful, beautiful, and deserve the best. Don't get mad at me for how I portray this message. Just get the message. That's all I ask. The arrest bringing some relief to this community, but there's still concern about the crime. Folks just be shooting for no reason. Like, and I gotta do it and I wanna see her grow up. And I wanna be here to watch her grow up. Reporting in Westwood, Jordan James, WREG, News Channel 3. And court documents also revealed Smith and Jackson also shared other children together. And I really hope that I'm not overly preaching I think my message is relatively simple. I speak this because I know I have a lot of women that watch and I believe that women are followers. Please don't get this twisted. It's a good thing. Women are followers and women will follow other women. So the way that we make these situations better to raise better little girls, to raise better teenage young girls and women and mothers and grandmothers is that we have to start holding each other accountable. You have to look to your sister. Look to your, your aunties, look to your babies, your young girls, and ask for them to demand better in this life and strive for better. Don't accept anything less. Hold each other accountable. Everybody will raise their standards. You will get a better quality product. And guess what? These men in general will start to behave better because they'll realize, oh, I can't just serve her some McDonald's. I got to go out and go earn some Benihana's or whatever y'all like. Papa Do's, whatever. I don't know what y'all fancy restaurants are that y'all like, but we just got to demand better. And I think that this mother accepted this. She accepted this dude. I'm not, I don't know her. I don't know what she felt about herself. I don't know if she had lower self-esteem. I don't know if she felt like she could do better, but I believe that if you demand better, you will get better. And I just don't think that when you date a guy like this Nakia dude, you just didn't demand very much. Let alone after one kid, you had a second kid and you were on kid number three. And where were we at at that point? family and friends begging you to do better. I bring this up because I hope that this story serves as a message to the community of Memphis, family and friends, or people who are in similar situations like this. Don't just throw this out and just say, oh, it's uh, like it, it, it's abusive and we just don't know how to get out of these situations, y'all. No. Act on your education, do background checks, and raise your standards, please, for the children, if not for yourself. Thank you guys so much for listening to the story with an open mind and hopefully an open heart. RIP to Ashanti, RIP to that unborn young man. Pray for those babies because they're going to need it. Thank you guys so much for listening to the story.
Do you guys mind if I give y'all, I think I have one, one more story? I know it's getting late, but I think I can tell you guys one more story, and I promise you I won't keep you long. And I really hope my message is actually, like, I hope it makes sense. I really hope I'm not losing anybody on this. I know I'm going to have some people in the comment section. Oh, yeah, yeah, you talking about that woman, y'all. I'm going to say some things that are not going to sit well with your sensibilities. Don't I say that before every single story damn near? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm, y'all. 